Hey, what's up everybody? DDF44 coming at you another video. All right, so he quoted me 130. Woo! That's a lot more than it was last time. I think it was like 80 something last time. But uh, they also quoted me a much higher price there and then told me that I could get a much lower price online. So we already know that. Uh, but it's still going to be a, a bit more expensive than what I want it to be. If that's the rates he got. But uh, they, they fluctuate, man. That's the problem with places like that. The rates fluctuate. You don't get the same rates just because you're coming back to the same place. It's a different time of the month different demand based on what it is they're looking at and their, their metrics or what have you so and this is what it is the good thing is i will have the money <clears throat> i just don't know if i have the money to pay for the other hotel if i stay there it all depends on how quickly my uncle can get me what i need in that regard so and whether or not they'll let me front myself the money tomorrow morning because it's definitely going to be one no two seventy i think it's two sixty or two seventy uh, for the first week there so that's the problem with my situation I only got about 250 on me right now so I could try to find a place to stay that don't cost nothing maybe spend a night on the street or something you know what I mean and then try to come back the very next day and get a, a place for myself uh, you know with the, with them which I would have exactly enough money but uh, that's one of them situations where it's just I'm now I'm relying once again on on the money to come through from the family, so you know, it just lean on faith on the situation. Can't really do nothing about that. How's that going? Trying my best, brother. How about yours, man? Yeah. Doing my best. Now I hear that, man. Keep going, brother. You got it. Mhm. Mm you too, fam. Just trying my best, man. That's what I'm telling. Like we just got to keep going, man. And and that's what it is. I want people to know, like, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's got a way to go as it pertains to the struggles in their lives and the ups and flows of what you go through. But I do believe that the application of belief that you can be aligned with the right timing so that you can have the best possible outcome is a real thing. No matter how good, how bad it is, and when you start, that part is not as important as that you start and then believe from there that the alignment of what is meant for you is be will be in your favor so long as you believe in that and follow it. Now, how best to follow it is hard to express to people because a lot of times it just ain't going to feel the way it feels to me that it feels to the next person. No different than, you know, comparing how a drug may feel to one person to another person. It just it, it doesn't work like that. We all have different DNA. We all have different uh, stuff going on, different levels of spiritual sensitivity different ancestors praying different prayers over that kind of thing so it's like there's no way to really know what works for everybody but what i can tell you is based on what it is i've learned as i was saying in my previous video that i've yet to upload you pray first before reacting to whatever negative thing that's coming your way or meditate first before reacting to whatever negative thing comes your way and just believe that it's not about your own timing because you don't know what's coming with with that movement that you take you may move at the wrong time with the right type of move it may be best that you do this but not now so that's what it is it's that meditation in my opinion should help with that so long as you apply it enough times to really get it to a point where you trust it apply it enough times to where you get it down packed for you and you're like all right i got it now i got it now i understand that this works and as it works i can apply it with confidence no different than anything else that you do working into your equation you know and the first time you do it may not feel all that great just like anything else you start first so i was having a conversation with my uncle about that in regards to going back to work i don't want to go back to work i can't stand going back to work and every part of my mind is telling me not to go back to work but he said you take that first step and eventually you're going to feel good about some of them days. You get the right job and you pray the right prayers. You're going to be in a position the way you're going to handle it a lot better than what you're telling yourself when you're new to it or fresh to it or whatever the word would be. So that's what it is I'm telling y'all, man. No different in regards to meditation. No different in regards to working out or eating good and all of that. You know, when I first started eating bad or rather eating good, it was like, man, I don't want to eat like this. Get this salad out of my face. Where's the burger at? Where's the, you know what I mean? But once you start realizing what it does for you, once you start realizing what eating good does for you, then it's like, all right, I like this. 
okay, this food tastes pretty good if I doctor it up this way. Okay, now I know exactly where I can get my food. You can get it for even less than what I was initially paying. Like all those things come in repetition of just an application of wanting to. And then from there, getting it done continuously until you got it. And so that's how it goes for everything that you start in life, I believe. That's how it goes for everything that you really want to get good at. It's got to start. For me, with that art thing, I didn't have no talent in art. I was really trash at art, to be honest with you. But it took a while for me to start seeing cohesive work. As I worked, I worked, I worked, I worked. Scratch, 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 scratch. Have these weeks where I couldn't get nothing but two or three good pieces in a whole week when I first got started. Or even worse, it would be a week where I could only do the same type of piece. It just felt like I was in a lull. Every piece I did kind of came off the same way. I worked my way through that. Two or three weeks later, I didn't have that problem. And it's just like, you just got to keep on coming back. So whatever it is you're doing, just keep coming back. And as you do, you'll start seeing those different levels that you reach in regards to what it is you're working on. Levels. Like, okay, I'm on level three. I'm not all that good, but I don't suck like I did at level one. All right, I'm level 30. And I'm very confident in what I'm doing, but I know I can get a lot better because I've seen how many levels I jump. That's how I was with art. And then, and then you get in situations like I am right now where you ain't did a piece in three weeks. I ain't did no art since I got into room 221. None. It just, did, I wasn't compelled to do it. And I, I honored that. I was fine with that. And when it's time for me to have another error with art, I'll be right back to it just as strong. Knowing that I've already established myself on level, at this point, level 300, <laughs> honestly. So as many pieces I've done. If we're measuring it that way. So it's like that time off, not forcing it, not trying to force the creativity of it all, will likely make it so that I make even better pieces when I do pick it back up. Same thing with anything else. I don't know if that works necessarily with meditation, like we've been saying, because meditation is guidance. In, in my mind, it's like a compass for, for how to uh, handle emotions and how to handle uh, different things. But as far as what you're practicing, I don't know if that works out with, work, with working out, brushing your teeth, and, and all this other stuff that helps, helps with your hygiene, because you have to maintain those things to a degree. But even in working out, you got to allow your muscles to, to recover. If you don't, you're going to have some very bad workouts and some very hard days. You know what I mean? People who never take a day off, some people are genetically wired for that when it comes to, 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 to exercise. But a good most of us are going to need some break at some time. At some point. And so that's really what it is, man. Well, I think when it comes to creative stuff, though, you just got to go with what feels right just so long as you know that the practice and the repetition of it will keep you in a space where you're growing. And you do it once and never again. Don't, don't expect to get great. So, you know, that's just what we're talking about, man. Practice and application of what works. My mom used to call it repetition is key. She would say repetition is key. You just got to keep coming back. I remember a couple times I went to this McDonald's with my boy Keontae and his mom. I do remember this McDonald's and this drive through Very distinctive McDonald's because of the color of it. But, uh, taking he lived a couple blocks over. Maybe a few, few blocks down, but a couple blocks over during this era. Well, we will go to this one but yeah man i know one place i didn't go while it being on this side of town that was north hollywood high i was only there for a semester and there wasn't really too much poignant stuff going on for me there i was only at uh lesser sacrament for one semester too but it, it just it hit different i guess it was because it was so much going on during that time but uh north hollywood High, i went there for about um, six months and of course that was during the era when i would hardly go to school so that is another reason why it wasn't that big of a deal to me to really look back on it. But um, I may have told y'all that when I went to North Hollywood High, as soon as my first day hit, the first day of school was the first day of the Metro strike. <laughs> like that was just the most whack timing in the world for my mom who worked a nice long job. But that's how I went. But of course, because I was going there to visit my boy Keontae, his house was like a second home to me at that time. So his mom was happy to take me to his home just about every day, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember exactly how that went. But I think the way we had it systemed out was 
I would go to his house after school. And then when his mom get off work, she would take me home. I think that's how that went. Or my mom would come pick me up and take me home. That's kind of how we did that. So eventually it just became a system for us that worked. But in the first couple of days, first couple of weeks, my mom had to try to come over there during the daytime and the traffic would be so bad because of course the Metro was up, was on strike. So everybody was on the streets. Everybody was picking their kids up. It was a nightmare for my mother. Absolute nightmare. But uh, that's how that went, man. <laughs> Uh, strike Ooh, that was bad hopefully they never go on strike again but um yeah man back then we didn't have trains either they was they were building the train station if i'm not mistaken by the time i finished my school year i think it was up i think that's how that went i don't remember though i really don't remember i don't think they i don't know did they have a train station back? i don't think they did i, I don't know it's kind of hazy it was almost like the train station was built either right after i left school or right before my sem semester ended i don't remember but it wasn't too long before I was going to the train station in that same little three year span over here in North Hollywood. Getting in all kinds of trouble. My boy Keontae, not real trouble, but we would just go riding and smoking a lot. That was our thing. Get in the car, pick up a few of his buddies, and we'd get in the car and smoke all night long, man. All, I mean, when I say all night long, some of them dudes, we would roll like four or five blunts at a time and just ride out listen to music some of my favorite songs i learned it i learned to love in those rides you know what i mean listening to mob deep and stuff like that a lot of that was what we were listening to in that time and dude just be smoking so heavy and that's what we did every very often i don't know if it's every day but it was most days most days so that's really what it was man i had my north hollywood era my adolescence as a 16 17 18 19 you know that's when i really started messing around hanging out here just understanding <laughs> how how it could be in this area because you know growing up in hollywood you thought north hollywood was like oh it's just a valley no it can go down out here and we had a lot of fun man we had a whole lot of fun in this area back when i was like 19 smoking with my buddies and stuff like that so yeah, man, it's really what it is. Just reminiscing. That's one thing I didn't do on this side of town was go back over to that North Hollywood High School to show y'all how that area looked. And uh, you know what I mean? I may do that before I leave here, especially if I get another couple of weeks at the hotel. We'll do that at some point. But yeah, man, it's a, it's a nice day. I'm glad that heat wave is done, y'all. That heat wave was... I mean, it wasn't as bad as the one about three weeks ago, but it was bad enough to where you definitely felt it. Got up to about 98, 90, 97, something like that. A week ago, it was about, or three weeks ago, rather, it was about 103. I think it got as high as 106 or something. 103 to 106 it got in one of those days. And it lasted like four days. So, yeah, man, that's why I was thankful that the Lord allowed me to have that hotel. I wasn't out here on these streets trying to figure it out. Because for those who did, boy, it was hard. Real hard, I can only imagine. So, you know, we take the blessings as they come. And we follow the, the timing of the Lord as he tells us to move, man. And the older I get, the more I realize that's for me. Another thing I can share with y'all, I may not have said this already on camera, is in going through all those, uh, those photos that I did, trying to create space just to find out that it wasn't enough space for all my art on uh, Google Photos. It was one of them situations where I was able to look at photos from when I was 27, 26, 25. And the one thing that stands out for me is two things that stand out for me. One is just how unhealthy I look. Even though I started getting in shape, I was still eating very bad and it showed up in my face. In fact, it, it has been doing that all the way up until I was 27, to be honest. With you. Look at some of those pictures to see the same thing. But, you know, when it comes to back then, it was like I was really, really undisciplined with my eating really done discipline with how I was taking in negative thoughts and negative content, lustful content. It was just like, I was really, really in my 26, 27 bag. And so as I look at my friend Kay and realize that's the era she's in, it just gave me a deeper understanding of what it meant to be patient with her and not expect so much from her. You know, and that's the one thing that I think this has taught me being in that hotel these last two or three days working through those photos, not to say that she was immature as I was, because women usually aren't. 
but I was a dodo bird. <laughs> 27, 26, 25. I might as well have been 17, 18, 19 the way that my head actually worked. Just no spiritual discipline whatsoever. No desire to discipline myself against bad energy, bad food. Just rolling with whatever and thinking I was a good person in the process too. Had a good heart, but just covered in bad stuff. And so for me, it's like getting older has helped me respect my energy more. It's like, all right, I don't want to deal with that. I know not to mess with God. And then I look at how I've handled life after that. Falling even further undisciplined in weed in my, thir my 30s. Falling even more so reliving my 20s and my 30s in some ways. Just more so isolated. And go to work, come home, smoke weed. Play video games. Just kind of just keeping it going. Like... I just understand you can't expect too much from young people, man. And and, and if they are giving you a, a certain level of of, uh, of maturity, you, you honor that in them because you ain't gonna find that in me back in the days. There was no ma I believed in God, but I didn't believe in God, if that makes any sense. I believed in God, but as it pertains to applying him like I'm doing right now, it never happened. It never happened. And that's just how it goes. You know, you just have to grow to understand what's so important about doing things the right way and why it's important that doing things the right way work for you. Why people believe in God and why they continue to, you know, kind of apply the faith. It's like, and a lot of times for me, I guess the discipline for me is not expecting everybody else to be on the same wavelength as me when I have so many years behind me at this point. It's like there's certain things that I take for granted. Like, yo, this is obvious because this and this. It's like, nah, bro, you've been on the earth for 39 years. Of course this is obvious to you. What you need to do is remember I was when you were 27, 26, 25. And then understand why you need to be more patient with your friend there. You know, and that, that helped me a lot. A whole lot. In regards to how I was viewing everything that I was talking about previous to. All them different things. I'm like, yo, man, you can't expect that from her at this age. You know what it's like to be around. And that's the point. I ain't been around a lot of people that age anymore. As I've grown older, and nobody, I'm not around nobody. So it's like certain stuff I just take for granted. This is what we need to do so that we can keep our minds straight. This is what we need to do so that... I mean, ain't nobody think about that in no 27. Show me something cool. Show me where the money at. And, you know, and it's just... It's what it is. And we see that a lot in our, our celebrities. Some of them are much younger than that. We expect so much from these people because they got so much influence and they... Images all over the place, man. These people 23, 22, 21. Some of them 15, 16, 17. Like, bro, you expect anything from them at all? Come on, man. Like, that's where I'm at with it now. It's like, oh, man, these, maybe they're not where I was, but there's some variation of that. Some variation of that. Show me what's cool. I'm still influenced by certain things or still naive about certain things or I'm not going to tell you the truth because I want you to think I'm more advanced and more mature than I am so it's a lot of that and then people grow man that's what I want to tell myself looking back on how I was thinking I think I was understanding that but not, not as deeply as I do right now when I look back at some of the pictures I had when I was 27 some of the food I was eating that's really where it was though for me it's food man I would take pictures of all that bad food too like look at this it's like bro you're wearing all of that that's what it is that's, that's, that no, that hits it right on the head in regards to how I feel about that. I was wearing all of my stress, wearing all of my sin, wearing all of my uh, lack of discipline. It was all in my face, all in my eyes. I was wearing it. I was wearing it. By way of my weight, wearing all of the negativity. You could see the lack of discipline in how I walked. You know, you can see the lack of discipline in how I handled myself from a physical standpoint. And it's like, yo, that's the change in me. That's the change. I'm going through all of this, but I'm living a very, you know, straight laced at this point in life. No weed, no drink, nothing. Back then, drink, and it showed. And now I look at people who are sometimes older than me, but they just never grow out of that. They never, they don't. They don't stop eating those processed foods. They don't start drinking more water. They don't, you know what I mean? It's like, that's not necessarily you, you, something you equate to maturity, but more so just, just a certain level of, 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 of discipline. 
that one wants to apply to themselves. Sometimes you see it in young people. You know, they have that discipline. It's like, whoa, okay, that's the difference. That's why they they look so clean. That's why their face doesn't have all that fat on it. That's why, you know, that kind of thing, because they, they are disciplined themselves based on how, I guess, how they raise or what it is they adapted to. Maybe they, they're around people older than them all the time, so they just get it a little better. But, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, man, that's the difference. How I eat, how I think, what I'm impressed by, what I'm not, how I feel about things, how much of what the people behind the curtain, so to speak, really influences my true opinions. Ooh, that's a big one. So a lot of that stuff was like, oh, there's racism, that. Yeah, there was racism for sure, but a lot of the stuff that was painted out for me wasn't necessarily what it was. It wasn't telling me who was around me. It was painting a picture of who was around me so that I would believe that. They weren't painting a picture of who it was that was actually putting that energy out there. They were trying to make it seem as if that was what the energy was out there, and I wasn't privy to that understanding. It's been a lot of that manipulation throughout the course of my life that you have to unlearn, undo. A lot of those thoughts ain't no good for you. You walk around looking at strangers like you know who they are. You don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And as you wear all your sin and all that bad food and wear all that, it affects how you think about yourself. It's just, it goes on and on and on. And those who are investing in that know that. They know that. And meanwhile, they're doing all types of other little subtle stuff that you ain't going to pay no attention to. You're just going to pay your way through it. What are you going to do? You're going to pay into it. And that's what it is. They're, going, they're, they're expecting you to be a certain level of distracted. To not really care so much that your emails are getting backed up years and years and years down the road. Little stuff that ain't even going to bother you that much because you don't really care until you actually need the space. You know, that kind of thing. It's like, oh, man. Throughout all that time while I was smoking all that weed, wearing all that, that sin on my face. They were backing up my emails with ads that I would need hours to delete. <laughs> ads that I would never even click on that were eating up my space just little stuff like that making me pay for stuff that wasn't necessary to pay for it taking advantage of my my distracted ignorance you know so I'm like man I'm paying attention to all of that sober clear of mind now I'm looking for that type of stuff now I'm helping others see what I see so that in their 25s while they're distracted influenced by nonsense they'll see me talking about all the things that I've already seen about all the stuff that I've been able to undo and all the bad foods that I don't want to wear on my face anymore face be like this good portion of my whole life from face be like this even if you look at some of my old videos when I first started this channel it's exactly what it was eating bad processed foods and wearing it mm -mm. that's why I've been thanking the Lord for helping me win the battle against bad foods on this side of town because when I first got over here I thought that's where it was headed when I was working security at uh, some of those security places I had lost everything in regards to my body because I wasn't able to work out but I also was eating bad food so it would automatically put the fat back on so I was stressed out I'm like man my stomach getting big that's yeah, because you're eating like you always used to eat and you don't eat like that you ain't gonna have those problems you may not have the muscle mass, but you definitely ain't going to put on the fat. And a lot of us think we need to go to doctors. Oh, let's go to the doctor. I can't get the fat off. I'm frustrated. I'm just going to be fat. No, you didn't. No, you got to dress. You got to dress your diet. You got to start eating better. You got to drink more water. You got to get some of that stuff out of your system. And then you won't need to go to the doctor to, to get the lipo this. To get the tuck that. You won't need to. It's all in the foods. It's always all in the foods. And our minds, because of the addictives and a lot of stuff that we eat, we think we need to eat like this or that there's no other way to eat but this. So there's no other way to look right unless we do this. You ain't got to do none of that. You need to change your diet. And so that's what I've come to understand now. It's like, man, I'm, I'm definitely against some foods. I don't want to touch none of that stuff. I mean, I damn near starve when the only thing there to eat is... It's bad foods. I look at a pizza and I'm like, man, that's what I see on my face. Anytime I see some of the food, people are like, oh, yeah, I got to have that. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because now when you get to my age, once you start eating like that, it can be a death sentence at this point. You start taking years off your life. It ain't just you walking around not healthy. Now it starts messing with your heart. Now it starts messing with your stomach. Now, you know what I mean? And I'm not talking about your look at your stomach. I'm talking about your bowels. It starts really messing with you. 
But if you start having those habits as a young person, you start eating properly, you ain't gonna have no those problems as you get older. You know what I mean? But they're not gonna teach you that. They're gonna have the kids eating all kinds of sugar, starting the process of having issues so that they can tumble them forward to needing light bulbs, so that they can tumble them forward into doing all this stuff and stuff. You don't need none of that. Start your diet. Get your diet right. Get those habits in place early. Learn to love fruit and vegetables early. Learn how to cook them in a way that you love so that by the time you get to an age where people are doing that around you, you still look young. You still look young, you still feel young, your body's still reacting properly. People be like, oh, you get to a certain age, you're not supposed to be able to do this. Why? Why? When I got the right habits leading up to that, why the heck would I be able to do that? You see what I'm saying? That's how I think nowadays. It's like, nah, I'm 39, but I still can do what I need to do physically. Climb steps, stream heat, whatever, I gotta do it. I'm able to do it. Right? Why? Because I never stopped taking care of myself. You know what I mean? That's how I gotta be. And whether you're in a position to work out or not, it's about how you eat. You eat right, you'll be all right. If you eat what they tell you to eat, then you're just gonna follow the timing they're on. Can we talk about timing? You're gonna be on the timing they're on. And that timing means at a certain age, you're just gonna have heart problems and you're gonna need certain medication because you're gonna have certain issues. And it's like, no, 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 none of that's real, man. And it's real. Apple a day keeps the sickness away. Simple. I walk a little bit after you eat, just like I'm doing right now. Simple. Very simple stuff, man. It's not as hard as they want us to think it is. So that's how I think. Just take care of yourself. And as you do, you'll find out that your body will take care of you. They don't require you getting up from physical therapist or, you know, doing all, not physical therapist, but, um, a workout partner, however that works. You ain't got to pay nobody to work you out to get all... Nah. Especially if you're just going to turn around and eat bad foods right after you finish working out. That's how me and my boy Bilski used to be. We would work out for three whole hours, four days a week, and go to in and out afterward. Love in and out But it was never going to put that six-pack on me unless I'm sitting there just scrunching it around. That's so hard. You know what I mean? Lifting, squatting so hard because the food was constantly putting the weight back on me and the unhealthiness back on me. And some of us have great metabolism. See, my father taught me this lesson. He had great metabolism. He could eat like I can't eat all life long. But one horrible Easter Sunday, massive, massive heart attack. That's how it happened. Man was the same weight for 56 years. Looked great all the time. Look how I look right now, all life long. But that heart attack crept up on him bad. Almost took him out. And I know why. It's because he ate pork every morning. You know, like every morning. He didn't eat great. You know? And, and that's what it really comes down to. Just because your body is going to be able to burn that off. Don't mean your heart going to be able to handle that. It ain't. Don't mean your bowels going to be able to handle that. It ain't not. You're going to look good. But you're going to struggle. And for me, it's like, I think I still, since I got off to such a bad start with my meals, I got stomach issues now, and it's because I got off to a bad start. Now, had I been living like this the whole time, with the habits that I have right now the whole time, I'd be in twice as good a shape on the inside. But I got troubles of the body that a person who was heavy back in the day probably has. Now, luckily enough, I was jogging and doing all kinds of stuff in my 20s. To where hopefully I got a good heart. Last time I went and got it checked out, I was good. Heart was fine. But, you know, that, that took a lot to get me to a space where my, I had an athletic heart. Because I'm pretty sure it was terrible before I started jogging. It's terrible before I started working out because of all the bad food that we eat. And I must say, I've been painting a picture that my mom never wanted healthy foods. But she would eat a lot more healthier than me. And so she showed me how to eat. So a lot of times I wanted bad cereal. She was eating oatmeal. That's how I eat now. A lot of times, I didn't want to eat grapes. She was eating grapes. That's how I eat now. You know what I mean? So a lot of the stuff that I know how to do was because I now remember how she used to eat. And she would just give me whatever I wanted. That's how that went. You know, so she wasn't necessarily eating as bad as I was most of the time. When I get pork or beef, she was eating chicken. And so that's kind of how that went. You know, that kind of thing. And now as I get older, it's like, oh, okay. She like eating healthier than me just naturally. But what it really did 
was give me an understanding of how I should have been eating and how to eat when, as I go older. So now I got some of those habits from her. And I don't think I've painted that picture enough in this camera because I really didn't see it that way until I started meditating on it. It's like mommy didn't always eat bad. It was me that was always eating bad and she allowed it. <laughs> and that kind of thing. So I just felt that was important to put in this camera. Um, you know, cause she, she really did eat better than me all the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it helped in the long run, it helped. And so now, as I grow older, I just look up and I say, okay, that's how I keep the weight down. Not necessarily because, not necessarily in a way that, uh, this makes it so that I have to work out five hours a day or nothing like that. No, just in the meals. Discipline yourself to enjoy the meals properly that you're supposed to be eating. And you'll find yourself in a space where you're happy with your weight. You'll be happy with how you look. You'll be happy with your face and all that other stuff. You know, but if it's one of those things where a lot of times I realize yeah, I'm unique in this way. I can eat the same thing every day. That works in my favor, but it doesn't work when you try to prepare meals for other people because it's like we gotta say we gotta eat that again we gotta eat that again i'm wired to that's the problem i'm gonna bore the hell out of somebody especially if you're a foodie or somebody that really likes to eat all different types of foods it, i don't ever need to do that i eat the same meal every day for three weeks six weeks like i've been doing six weeks love it every time too this is how i'm wired you know it's just how i'm wired if i love something i will do it that way because i'm systematic you know when I was eating fish every day, I was fish every day for like two years. Two years. You know what I mean? When I was eating uh, waffles and eggs every day and sausage and, and little sliced apples every day for like three years. It's just how I operate with food. It's not abnormal to me. It doesn't feel monotonous to me. It's what I crave every single time. It's just it's a certain wiring of the brain. But because I'm like that, I can eat discipline. And then from there, my body will react well to what I'm eating if I'm eating properly. Or to the contrary, will go grow completely out of shape really, really fast because of that. You know, it's just how I am. I've I've been like that um, since my mom passed when I was finally able to establish myself. Now with her, we eat different all the time. She cooks something different every day. Da, 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 da. She like <clears throat> variety, like normal people. So you know that that established, like I said, when I was older. But uh, yeah, man, headed back to the hotel right now full walk you know walked all the way down to that ho no hotel hotel and then walked all the way back doing content for you as well and uh i guess i'll do laundry in the morning if i decide to do it if not i'll do it on saturday morning after i finish getting back in here if i'm able to um i ain't really thought too much about it but i know i need to uh consider it but um you know what i mean this is the life we're in man i like living like this where i'm not working dude i really do for, for better or for worse, I don't want to be on nobody's schedule at all. This is a better living for me. It's just like, I think it's, more, it's a better living for most people. I ain't going to front like that's exclusive to me. But I've been able to afford doing this uh, to my own detriment. But I loved it, man. I got to answer to nobody. I ain't got to put on no uniform and have people looking at me like I'm about to break their neck. Just because I'm black in that uniform. I hated doing that security stuff, man. Hated it. Hated it most of the time. Even though I was around people, I appreciated a lot of the time. I still hated the job itself. It wasn't for me. I'm a free spirit. I want to be able to move around the world as I do right now. That's why I was hoping AMC would squeeze for me so I can have enough money to live the way I want to live because it don't take much for me to be happy. I don't need two, three billion dollars to be a happy person. I really don't. Y'all see how I'm living like this. I'm happy like this. Just give me enough to pay for what I need to pay for. I'm good. It's just unfortunate that I can't live a whole life retired, basically. Because I'm wired for it. And we'll still get work done. Still be a professional, so to speak, in just about a seven, eight different areas. You know, that's how I want to live. That's why I'm hopeful the Lord will give me a life like that going forward. So I ain't got to keep on getting in these, these open-ended work situations that are only supposed to end when you're like 70 years old. Oh, I'm not wired for that. Never was. I'm wired for monotonous eating, but not monotonous work. Nah. Working 40 years at the Ford. Nah, 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 nah. I was never wired for nothing like that. Only to, only to have them <clears throat> fire me overnight. Nah, nah, nah. Nah. My spirit rejected that completely. And that's why I'm in the situation I'm in right now. Hey, buddy. 
Don't you cross, you know he's running over here. Nah, I was talking about the dog is running toward me without no uh without no leash, but y'all know if y'all follow me long enough, I rarely run from dogs. Uh, and the dog gonna chase me, he's gonna find out that I ain't the type that's gonna be too scared unless he a very big dog with a rabid mouth. Other than that, buddy, <laughs> you just as free as I am. That's how I feel about it. And usually when they sense no fear, they just turn back around. Yeah, yeah. That's how that was right there. He came running. Most people that took off running, he would have chased him. Not me. You gonna be you gonna be seeing how slow I walk regardless, bro. I ain't moving. You come over and bite me, I'll bite you back. <laughs> we just be some biting fools. It ain't no big deal. But uh yeah man, that's how I feel. I just I just wanna take it easy. I don't know what's what the future holds for me. I never do these days. But it's there's a piece in believing in God and then just turning on the camera and speaking to y'all. And so that's what I'm engaging in right now, man. Time to go back in. BDL 44. I thank y'all for watching.